Hey y'all, today let's work on uh, Shimano Stratic uh, 4000 FJ. Uh, I'm going to show you how to break down and put together or put back together the majority of this reel. Uh, it needs to be serviced, so thought I'd make a video of it uh, just to show you how to take most of this stuff apart. Noisy, pretty stiff, has some issues here. Um, the bearing cover is missing and we have a nasty line roller or the bearing is bad inside here so let's just jump right into it I'm gonna pull the spool off by unscrewing this drag knob and we're gonna work on the rotor first so let's get that off uh, to, to take, remove the handle you have to unscrew it it up a little bit we're gonna pop these things off they come straight up like so there's some shims or some washers there and there's also a metal plate on the bottom all right so let's open it up we're gonna undo that screw there And also a screw up here. Now these rarely get stuck or uh, frozen in there. Seems like this one might be broken, which is not unheard of. Yeah, it's broken off. Happens. We could use some crazy glue on it, uh, but first we have to get that out. I'm going to pause the camera and remove that. Uh, essentially all I'm doing is I'm going to push down on this to create some um, uh, resistance while I try to unscrew that knob or unscrew that screw from the top. If we can't get it out then we'll just leave it the way it is. Okay, so I couldn't get it out. Um, I mean I'm sure I could, but I risk damaging that post inside there. kind of just want to have it there as a little bit of a support. Um, as I was saying before I pause the video, these don't have a tendency to get frozen in there, but what happens is uh, if you over tighten this screw when you're putting this, this boot back on, you'll have a tendency to snap or shear that post off of there. Oh. Similar to uh, Stella's, that kind of happens a lot as well. Uh, but it can still stay on there with just the one screw on the back side, which is why you can't see it until you open it up. Anyhow, we're going to leave that alone and we're going to undo this screw or this nut to get the uh, the rotor off and work on that first. This screw is ready to loosen, ready, ready to loosen, which is also known as clockwise. The bottom of this screw, there is nothing. I thought there was something. All right, so we're going to set this aside and Uh, I'm going to do some cleaning on this, but then I'm going to show you how to break down a couple pieces of there. Whenever you're taking these rotors off, uh, you want to make sure there's no, uh, usually there's a washer on top. Want to make sure the wash doesn't stick to that and that you lose it because you'll need to put it back on there. And for some reason, um, dirt has that tendency to get stuck up inside there. So I just clean it as much as I can, uh, or as quickly as I can. What you're hearing here is the line roller. <laughs> uh, so let's break this down. So we're gonna replace the line roller, but I'm also gonna show you how to um, to do the, the 
the bail spring on this. I'm not gonna remove this side, but if you needed to, you get onto these, these two screws. This one is larger than this one. And there's a screw under there to pull this off. We're just gonna do this side. So I'm gonna show you how to take this apart for the bail spring. I did undid that screw there, just lift up gently and kind of roll it up at an angle, about 45 degrees. Pop that arm out of there. And what you'll notice here is there's a little click thing here that has a tendency to fall out. So don't lose that. There's also a spring inside that hole. Then all you have is the arm that goes into the spring and you have the trip arm on the bottom. So let's just clean that out a little bit and then we're going to get that put back in. One thing you got to be noted, uh, <clears throat> careful of on here is that little post there and that spring inside there. To help that stick in place, you can add some grease to the top of it when you get ready to put it back on. Alright, so we're going to lightly grease these things. Put a light amount of grease on this trip arm here. Same for the spring. It's really not a lot. It's going to roll it in your fingers. And for this arm here as well. And the first thing I'm going to do is put that little pin back in. Like I said, if you add some grease there, it helps it stay in place. So whenever you move the, the reel around, it doesn't uh, go flying around. All right, so for the spring, I'm sorry, hold on. For the, uh, <coughs> the trip arm, the long end faces down like so. So it sticks out like that. Then you can stick your spring in. Uh, on the spring, you'll notice that there's a a thicker end, or <coughs> excuse me, a wider end, and a narrower end. N the narrower end is going to face up. Stick that through there like that until it sits about there. Make sure that trip arm is above this spring assembly here, and all you're going to do is. Simply find the, the hole that's on the bottom there. I'm going to clean that up first. Come here. And I'm going to do some oil to it afterwards. You don't need to, um, you need to put anything there. Find that hole, make sure it's up, upright. I keep pushing it down, that's why it does that. Fit it in the hole, then you are gently go down while it's raised up. I'm keeping my finger over that spring just in case, but it doesn't really go anywhere until you find the hole for the, for the bail arm and just kind of rock it back and forth until it sets in place. Now, this is going to want to spring out on you, so you want to hold on to it with two fingers like that. And just kind of screw, screw that in place. Notice that that spring is loaded, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Let me just cover that up. 
then we'll get to the uh, the line roller. Again, don't forget the top screw is the larger screw, the bottom screw is the smaller screw. You can verify and make sure it works, and it does. All right, so let's do the <coughs> let's do the line roller. And get that replaced. And I hope this one is frozen, so I can show you guys a little trick as to how you can easily get that out of there. Not, no worries. All right, so you have that plate, and yes, it is frozen. Awesome. So I'm gonna pause the video, uh, grab the bearing for this, and then I'm gonna show you so that afterwards. I'll show you a trick on how to pop that out without um, risking damaging too much on there. There's still a risk, but not, not a lot. Okay, so the reason you change this bearing up when you hear that noise is because it's extremely difficult to get that not to do that. That noise anymore. Even when you oil it, it's still just nasty, like sandpaper kind of sound. All right, so how to remove this? Now, there is some parts you have to be careful for. Uh, if you notice on this post, there's two little prongs there. That's the one thing you can damage when you do it this way, uh, but it's not, it's not likely. All right, so I'm gonna take a vise, kind of open that to about right there. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go a little bit larger. I screwed the screw back in. I'm gonna go a little bit lower on that. I'm just gonna start at the top, just like this. I hope you guys can see that. And gently go and press pops the the post through now if you undo this screw here and it still doesn't want to come out because everything's frozen you can extend that screw a little bit like that and do it again I think this one will probably come out it didn't feel so tight in there so of course maybe I spoke too soon no okay good Did speak too soon. Just turn my fingers, see if that works. It did. And now we're good, and that's removed. Uh, the bearing can be a little difficult to come out, uh, so you kind of just got to work at it. I have this tool from Bearing Bad that really helps, <coughs> that it really helps to get it out of there. I'm just going to work on cleaning these things up because obviously there's some corrosion and stuff in there. And if that doesn't get it out, then we go for our small little screwdriver. Just kind of scrape that out of there. And you do want to be careful. You don't want to break that. 
if you go too hard. But of course, if the corrosion is extensive, you should be replacing that anyhow. Let's get this last one done and then we'll work on getting that bearing out of there. That one looks pretty good. All right, so to remove this bearing, you gotta pull from, well, let's pull this washer off here first so we don't damage that. That goes on that side. The bearing comes from the bail arm side, so from this side. So it'll look like this. If you'll notice, there's a thicker end to the line roller on this side than there is on this side. And we're just gonna pull it out. It usually works. Sometimes it takes a couple tries. And of course, if you can't get it out, then just re replace the entire assembly. All you're replacing is the bushing that's in the line roller, the line roller, and the bearing. Now again, for the bushing inside there, if it's just too bad inside there, which this one isn't, um, you'll want to go ahead and replace that anyhow. But remember, this is plastic, so it's, it can uh, be easily cleaned. So let's set that aside and then we're going to put this together. I'm going to oil this bearing. Then I'm going to grease these components here. And the reason you grease these things up is uh, so you don't have that issue that we just had where things kind of get frozen. And even though this is a uh, plastic, I still grease inside that line roller and that bushing inside there. Good stuff. Now let me make sure this bearing has some good oil in it. And then we're also gonna grease that. All we're doing is adding a, uh, <clears throat> a barrier so that the uh, it helps protect it against the salt water water getting in there. The grease inside here as well. And in that arm down there. And you can also grease the back side. Oops, it didn't grease our post. When you stick this in, you're going to want to make sure that you feel this kind of set in place. So this is going to go through here like this. And if you just kind of turn it with your finger on this side while you push from this side, you'll feel you get to a point where you can't turn it anymore. Oh, with the first washer, we're going to take the line roller and put our <coughs> our washer on there like that that's the plastic washer just gonna stick that over there now we can take our bearing pop that in then our final metal washer and stick that in like that now the reason you want to hold on to this end is because there's those two prongs have to sit inside that groove there. So I'm just going to line this up with uh, that washer with the notch that's inside of here. And make sure it's sitting flush. If it's not, you can flip. 
flip it over and do it again. But make sure that notch is, or that metal plate is over the notch that's under the bail arm. Now we're gonna gently work this up, push this in, and you'll feel it's kind of set in place there. Okay, so now we can get to the main housing on this. Uh, I'm gonna undo this screw at the bottom here. And you wanna take note of the size and lengths of these screws, uh, cause some of them are different. There's a screw there on that side. There's one back here by the neck. That one was already loose. Possible the person tried to open it himself. Or maybe just got loose. Notice that one is smaller. And then the other two remaining screws are under this rotor brake here. So we have to pull that off to get to it. Now you can do it like this with the uh, uh, with the anti reverse on still, or you can remove the anti reverse and have a little less room to clear to pull it off. Either way, it's not too difficult to do. But you don't want to, uh, you don't want to damage that, uh, that ramp right there. So just be a little careful with that. I'm gonna leave it there for now. And I'll do these two screws up here. Once I'm done with these screws, or when I pull them out, I'm gonna lay them out for you so you can see what they look like. because these two screws are different. All right, so you have one that has kind of a sloped head. And that's essentially how they sit. That one there, obviously that one there, and that one there, and this one on the back side. And I actually like to keep them lined up the way they came out, just in case I forget. Now let's see if this is frozen or if we can just pull this off. Just like we should. Okay. We've got a lot of work in here to do. Uh, I'm going to break some of this stuff down and I'm going to show you how to uh, put it back together. I'm going to, I need to pop this out because it's obviously frozen inside there. We've got issues with the, uh, with the shaft and the block on the bottom. Got a lot of issues with this reel. All right, let's pull this off. All right, so now I'm gonna undo the, uh, the anti-reverse clutch. We're gonna suspect that this is bad. And we know something is bad inside here, so. This could be frozen on. Yeah, the anti-reverse is shot. And this is probably frozen. Yep, okay. All right, so we're gonna undo the bottom plate. On these, the screws are different as well. One's a little bit smaller. The larger one goes on a larger hole, obviously. And I'm doing this so I can pull out those, uh, those rods there unless they're frozen also. All right, so at this point we can, I wanna rotate, this is what I wanna do. Don't try this. All right, we're 
we're gonna have issues with this. I'm just gonna pop this out, guys. I'm not gonna show you how, how I do that part. Uh, it's, it's gonna be a little while. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so we're back and we got uh, most of it out. This is frozen to that gear up there, that transfer. Uh, risk a lot of damage to the reel if I try to remove that, so we'll leave that in there, but everything's cleaned out. And this lower bearing is frozen to this. I can remove this one, but the bearing is fine. So rather than damaging the bearing to remove it, I'm gonna leave it on there and just, we're gonna oil it. So since we had like a lot of corrosion and stuff in here, I'm gonna spray these things down with some corrosion X. And just kind of wipe that in with a Q-tip or something. You don't need a lot of it, just like a light coating. And then when we add the grease, uh, that'll act kind of like a little thinner uh, for it as well, which will help these gears just kind of feel good or feel uh, nice and smooth. Now, uh, some people use just like either this or like Enox or something and not put any grease. Uh, I don't really do that, but I'm sure you could. And I would only recommend that if you're gonna be servicing your reel yourself um, fairly often, just to make sure. All right, so that's pretty good there. Now we're gonna add some grease to certain points on this. Uh, boom, that's about it for this. A tad bit there. And the grease here where that brand's gonna sit because that was frozen in there as well. Also on this side, this one was just stuck, it wasn't frozen. But I did have some wear there. And in here where that handle bearing sits, or the handle side bearing. That's meaning if you're left-handed, are you cranking with the left? All right, now I'm gonna take all these bearings that I'm gonna replace here. Is that it? I think that's it. I'm gonna oil all of them. Now we're gonna work on getting this shaft back in. I'm gonna add some corrosion next to this as well. And I'm not gonna add any grease to that, uh, to that pole. So just that for the, uh, for the block. Let that kind of just soak in there. All right, so we're gonna stick this through so we can get that up in there, just like so. All right, so now I'm gonna get this gear on there. And then I'm gonna oil that bearing in the bottom as well. Now for greasing purposes, you don't need to grease the bottom portion of this, but I think as you know, if you've seen my videos before, I like to grease the entire pinion gear. Now it's not the best bearing in the world, but it's functional, so. <laughs> all 
All right, so for the main gear, where's that? We're gonna do the same thing, just a light amount of grease. I like to grease, uh, grease the back side as well. And of course that post. All right, so now that's out of the way, we can go ahead and put the pinion gear on. I'm gonna leave it right there, just in case this is a little tight going down. It is, I'm gonna work that back and forth just to loosen it up a little bit. Now we're going to set this in place. This is a little tricky because you have to get past that gear inside there to get this seated properly. Move this up a little bit. Let's get that back in there. And now we can seat this uh, pinion bearing on. Let's roll this over. Don't be difficult. All right, let me pull this up and roll it over. All right, now everything's set there. We're gonna take our washer for this, uh, for the worm. Get that put back on there. I can see it, I just can't get it. All right, we're on. Uh, this bushing right there has a little notch on it. You're gonna seat that so the notch is flush with the housing. And we just gotta find The shaft at the end of the uh, of the worm gear. It's right about there. <clears throat> All right, there it goes. Now that notch has to fit inside that little uh, little indentation or notch out of the uh, housing for it to see properly. Okay, and now we can put our post in. The post itself has to be seated uh, flush as well. So there's like a little receiving hole at the end of it that you have to find to put that in. Is 
it's not that difficult to find. But of course, I'm having trouble finding the hole. Alright, there goes the first one, and the second one goes in on this hole right here. So you can show you that so you guys can see where it's uh, situated. And same process. Just make sure it's flush. Now we can take this cover here and cover that up. The way this sits is there's a notch right there on the housing or a little post there that notch on that plate will sit on top of it remember the large screw goes into the larger hole and the other smaller screw goes into the other hole Now, since this was uh, the worm and that transfer gear were frozen together or fused together, uh, there's not much to do up here, but just put this thing down. Hopefully, we make it nice and straightforward. We found a way not to do that. I should have just done this first. So I apologize if I pause this video again and reset everything. I'm going to try to do it without that. next let's do her oh, let me pop this yeesh I need to pop this pinion bearing out one thing I forgot to put on there was this uh, that washer there okay so we got that out that washer goes in first and you see the bearing back on there Now we can stick this bearing inside here. And now we can put the anti reverse on. The anti reverse is going to sit, that little notch right there is going to fit over that post on that uh, lever, that cam. And there's two little posts on this clutch that fits into corresponding holes on the uh, on the housing. I'm gonna reuse the screws from the other anti reverse that we had in there. And exactly how you see me putting these uh, screws in is where they're gonna be situated. There's no screw going over here, so it's just one, two, and three. When you're putting these screws in, just make sure you don't uh, re-thread the grooves. So just make sure it's going in fairly fairly smoothly. If it feels super tight going in, then you're re-threading the inside, and that's not good. All right, so now we can put this washer on top 
this is the washer. Yep. I have to put this thing on. That's the inner race essentially. To get that in there, you just need to set it on top. It's keyed, so it has to fit over it. And then just twist as you push down, and it'll sit on there. Then you can put that washer on. And now we're almost done. Okay, so before I forget, I'm going to stick the rotor brake, I'm sorry, the uh, bail trip on there, that ramp. You don't need to grease these right away because it's probably going to come off. And now we can stick our, our final bearing in the housing. Alright, so last step would be to stick our main gear in there, or I want to say last step. And now we can set this on there. Now this should go in pretty easily, so hopefully that's the case. Good. Almost good. Now I didn't put any shims on there yet because I want to feel this, to feel how it feels. It feels a little... Let's see. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, I'm going to pause the camera. I'm going to play with these shims uh, to get a, a good feel for this, or meaning the uh, the spin or the rotation on this, and then I'll come right back to you guys. Okay, so I did the um, testing for the shims, and I ended up using one of the shims on here, uh, so now we can go ahead and finish this up. I'm going to add some grease to this hole right here, where that one metal screw is going to be going in. We can stick our ramp on there. Make sure everything is set here. We can stick our ramp right in there. Like so. And then we can close this up. Just like that. Now let's screw them all in. Remember that screw on the right top is different than the others, as well as this metal screw over here. I hope I wasn't out of focus there, sorry. Oh, and also when I was doing this, uh, I just couldn't take the noise of the bearing, the lower pinion bearing, so I went ahead and changed it out. Not sure why. The reason I didn't change it at first is because it worked. And the person that's getting these reels done uh, wanted to keep whatever worked. However, it's quite certain he wouldn't be happy with the result. You know, all these other things were changed out and it sounded, still sounded pretty bad. So. Go ahead and change it out anyhow. Okay, so let's put the uh, the brake on. You just roll it down. You don't want to overstretch these things, but worst case scenario, if it goes bad on you, then you can just remove it altogether or not even use it. it doesn't really need to be there. Yeah, so I'm gonna start over here like this work our way around and then when we get to here let me just kind of press it in until it until it drops in place and you know it's in when it's all flush now we can uh, grease that ramp and I like to grease from here 
to about there for the bail trip. Now that wash is already in there, so all we're going to do is grease the bottom here. some on top and I did forget to oil the uh, pivots on this bear on this uh, on the bill wire so I'll do that now before I forget I'm just gonna grease oil there there and there and just kind of work that in So let's set this on and then we'll get this essentially finished up. To dine it, we're going to go to our left or counterclockwise. And you want to snug, but you don't want to over tighten this. Feels good. All right, let's get this cap on there. We're missing. And now we can stick our little boot on there. I'm going to add some grease to right here and also right here where that screw is going to go in inside that nut on the inside. I like to grease here also, because if any water kind of settles in there, it could affect that screw. That looks good. Well, let's just screw this in. All right, so now we're gonna service the handle and have the spool last, and then we'll be done. Look at this video is like 10 hours or something. The sad truth is the majority of reels I get are, are reels that are kind of like this where they need a lot of work. Um, well, a moderate amount of a moderate to a lot. So it does take some time. Because uh, usually things are kind of frozen up, locked in place. And all that takes time to, to do or to take off. But then again, I'm not necessarily the fastest person around. I grease a little bit inside there. Not really. Grease the threads here. I was going to go inside the main gear. And I'm also going to grease that main gear. I add a little bit of grease on the inside right there. So for this handle, it sounds fine. So all I'm going to do is open this up and drop some oil in there. And it looks all right too. So oil here. You can add some oil there if you want. And just drop some oil inside there. And that's it. Kind of work that in. Let me just close it up. Take this on and see how it feels. Because we don't need the spool on for that. Now I did I can say that I did cheat a little bit, I already felt it, but 
Wheels are funny sometimes. Sometimes you take them apart, put them together, they feel good. Take it apart, put it together again, and it feels funny. So then something is off. So that feels good. Nice. All right. So let's get to the spool. To remove the uh, the drag washers, undo that retaining spring right there. And we are not going to change these drags out even though they're a little bit worn. Because again, this guy is uh, trying to save money on this thing. Or trying to do it as cheaply as possible. So even though the drags are worn, they're still usable. And it might just be the top one. All I'm doing right now is just kind of clean this stuff out. Clean out the uh, residual or expelled fibers from those washers. Now we can start at the bottom. And right, we're not going to clean those things off necessarily. Any kind of fraying that we see will kind of clean off. I'm just going to drop that in there. And you can use drag grease on these things if you wanted to. Uh, I typically use like a heavier kind of oil, like this Abu Garcia oil. And I put a couple of drops on it. I don't put a whole bunch. Then the first thing that goes on top of that drag washer would be this funny looking metal drag washer. And that just goes straight down like that. It'll be like that. I'm gonna stick this on top of hair first before I put it inside. You can do it either way. Let's drop this in. The reason I did it that way is because sometimes uh, <laughs> I can't get the washer on, on top of that if I put the plate in first. Be careful of these things, they're easily, uh, easily frayed. Next goes that keyed washer, has that four, the four uh, nubs on it. Stick that washer inside there. And I add the grease afterwards, I'm sorry, the oil afterwards. Again, four or five drops should work. That's pretty much it. Uh, when you're putting this back in, make sure it's seated uh, properly inside those grooves. So the way I kind of like to do it is I start with uh, one end at an angle to get inside the groove or slot that's in there that's designed for the uh, retaining spring. Hold on to that side and bring the subsequent sides in like that. Then I just double check to make sure that it's all on the right level. And that looks good. All right. Now we can put that on and we'll test the drag out just to make sure it works properly. I lied to you guys. I'm gonna do inside here also. I'm gonna add some grease on the top. can't see that sorry top of there and there that's the line keeper and the clicker over there I try not to put any on the um, on the tooth itself but if you do it's not that big of a deal get these washers out of here I think I'll show you what this looks like just so you know 
So this metal piece here, I don't want to break it either. Yeah, it comes out. To replace it, you simply fit it into the uh, the click gear with those notches. And I hope you can see that. And let's put our washers back on here. Now we can test this drag out. I did already clean that drag knob already, so so now we're missing something. We got to push harder. Sometimes what happens when you put those washers on, they get stuck, so you're sitting a little bit high. You gotta push to make sure it's seated properly, so your clicker works. I don't think at this point is just testing the drag out to make sure it works fine. feels fine. All right, so that's how you break down and put together a Stratic uh, 4000 FJ, was it? 4000 FJ. Uh, hope to help some of you guys out there. If you appreciate the content, please uh, consider hitting that subscribe and that like button and telling your friends about the channel. All right, I'll see you guys uh, next time. Thank you.